Hello and welcome to the next Lucosa Retro Game Review video. So for this one it is the Commodore 64 conversion of Rolling Thunder. Now I've already covered the coin op original which I was a big fan of back in the day and still am. I've also covered the Amiga version uh, which was not good at all. Um, so how does the Commodore 64 version fare? Well, one way to find out. Let's get a game underway. Hmm. So, first thing that uh, instantly springs to mind is uh, visually this is fucking horrible. Um, but we'll actually get on with the uh, review uh, in due course. So if you're not familiar with Rolling Thunder, um, it's it's basically based on some like 60s uh, well I'd say like spy sort of thing but that always brings up images of James Bond it's clearly not a uh, Bond influence it's more like one of those 60s sort of Lou Grade uh, series you know something like Department S or uh, the Protectors or something. One of the one of the third rate ones, anyway. But don't let that description put you off. The the coin off original is actually a fantastic game. I've been a fan of it pretty much from the day I first encountered it back in '86, which reminds me, I didn't say. Uh, when this conversion came out, because I'm trying to remember. It was either 86 or 87, I'll double check it before I upload this thing anyway. So it was published by US Gold, or at least it was in the UK. Um, I don't know who it was who actually coded the uh, Commodore 64 version. The Amiga version was by Teartex, which told you everything you needed to know. Um, Teartex are for the Amiga what you know CRL are for the Commodore 64. You, you see that name, you stay well clear of it. I don't think they did the 64 version though. I'm not even sure if they actually did any uh, 64 games. So the idea, the idea then is to get from one end of the level to the other, um, shooting the uh, enemy whatever they are. And uh, you have a time limit, which is annoying, but you know, that every arcade uh, coin op game had a fucking time limit at this point. Uh, you also had limited ammunition, or at least it says you have limited ammunition. In fact, you don't, but uh, the various ammo types all have uh, different firing rates. Machine gun is the fastest, your regular gun is medium and then once your regular gun ammo reaches zero you do have this sort of like backup uh, uh, weapon but it fires unbelievably slowly it's it's like a last resort thing so anyway we need to get up here sometimes some cunt shows up here and you gotta try and avoid him but no he hasn't shown up this time jump down to the bottom so the various um, costumes or outfits or whatever you want to describe them as that uh, the uh, enemies wear 
gives you a sort of visual clue as to how many shots they take. These guys in white and red, uh, they take three hits to dispatch. The regular guys here in the red and purple uh, just take the one. And then there are guys who in uh, yellow and blue, they take two shots. You also have a bit of a half chance if you're not shot in the face at point blank range. Uh, if uh, an enemy hits you, and I mean comes into contact with you, not uh, hits you with, uh, you know, by shooting at you, um, you can sort of jump back, but you lose some of your life. You'll notice the life bar at the bottom there. The display is a little bit. Um, shall we say oh fucking not again uh, yeah the display is a little bit misleading because it makes it look like you have quite um, a lot of uh, energy there in that uh, life bar in fact the first hit will halve that and the second hit then depletes it completely so level three is already being a bit of a cunt so let's uh not stay on the bottom, let's move up to the top here, because now that I've done that there's no sign of anyone on the bottom. Oh you fucking can't, they keep <laughs> shooting me at fucking point blank range. Gonna say, I bet that cunt would then jump. <laughs> now, the term is actually get somewhere on this level. I mean, level three is pretty tough, although it's nothing compared to how tough the uh, coin op person is. Level three is staggeringly difficult. Oh, you fucker. Keeps jumping and avoiding my fucking shot. Oh, let's jump down. I can't say that was inevitable. So it's at least... Okay, that shot that that cunt fired went straight through me. You, it wasn't my imagination, was it? You all saw that as well. How much time have I got left? 158. Uh, I'm probably going to lose a life before I uh, run out of time. Coming down here, hurry up, yo. Can I jump up there? No. Oh, I'm amazed actually that no one came out of that door. version has 10 levels. I don't know if the 64 version has all 10. 
and even then uh, in the coin up the, the 10 levels it's basically uh, you go through the first five and then it loops around uh, those five again but uh, there are some slight changes you can and there we go game over so I got the level four but I didn't exactly do a lot there Mm. Right, another go. Let's get uh, the review underway. Um, right, so graphics. I mean, it's it's graphics by Lego, isn't it? I mean, Blocky doesn't even begin to describe it. Uh, graphically, the game is fucking hideous. Uh, there is no other way of describing it. Um, But one thing this version has over certainly the Amiga ST and Spectrum versions is that uh, you can actually see the difference between um, each of the uh, enemies that uh, are on screen. You can see how many shots they're going to take. Uh, like I've already said, the, uh, the guy in, in white takes three shots, the guy in yellow takes two. And the guys in purple here take one. Now in the Amiga version, they all look exactly the same, so you have no idea how many shots they're gonna gonna take, which is shit. Um, and the animation on the uh, enemies isn't too bad until they um, start punching you. Then it does look shit. Uh, unfortunately, when it comes to animation, the same can't be said of uh, the character you play. I mean, he looks like a fucking retard at the best of times. But, I mean, when he walks, I think the animation on uh, the character you play in Berserk is more realistic. It, it's, it just looks fucking awful. Um, but I mean, like I've already said, visually this game is horrendous. Uh, it, it really is an absolute fucking abomination. And it also does the same thing that actually I, I think all uh, conversions of Rolling Thunder do, which is a large part of the screen taken up with the fucking logo saying Rolling Thunder. I know it's Rolling Thunder. I bought the fucking game. I've loaded it. I know what it fucking is. I don't need a permanent on-screen reminder telling me that. That is one of my biggest pet hates in gaming of any era what's the fucking point apart from wasting screen space so yeah I, I detest that but like I say that is not limited to the Commodore 64 version every fucking uh, conversion of uh, Rolling Thunder did that backgrounds are okay um, they're not really anything more than okay they're, they're functional I mean functional graphics have their place uh, the last game I did uh, Drelbs um, the, the graphics there were I'd say purely functional but that also was a much earlier game so it, it got away with it this for the time that this came out uh, I would expect more. I'd expect a lot more um, in terms of visual uh, for, for you know, a game that came out at this sort of time. On the plus side though, I, it, um, and frankly the graphics almost look unfinished. But yeah, on the plus side, the game is a single load, there's no multi-load here and it's almost as if they thought right do we make it uh, multi-loads um, so we can make it look really great or shall we get rid of the multi-load system which so many people rightly hate and um, 
you know, but we'll have to compromise how it looks. On an emulator, you would clearly say, oh no, they went the wrong way. But uh, if you had this game back in the day, which I didn't, I mean, I had the Amiga version, that was fucking shit. Um, yeah, if you had it back in the day, you'd probably be be grateful that they, they went that way. No fucking irritating multi-load. I mean, you think of something like uh, what was it, Super Spy, where you're playing, you know, a level for a matter of seconds, and then you're sitting there for fuck knows how long, waiting for the next level to load in. So, yeah, you, you look at it like that, you think, yeah, okay, they went the right way. So, yeah, we're able to jump right down to the bottom, which you're not supposed to do. In the coin-op, and certainly in the Amiga versions, I don't know about any of the others. All of these walkways have uh, like uh, handrails. And if you, or at least most of them have handrails, if there's no handrail there, there you can't jump up and down uh, onto that platform. Well, on the first two levels, I don't think the level three has them. Um, but here, there's no sign of them anywhere. So, yeah, you're jumping up and down uh, you know, onto and off of any platform you like. Which, I guess, they had no real alternative. They had to do that. But uh, it does mean that certainly on level 2, you can take advantage of it and get through the level a lot quicker. The levels are a lot shorter than they are in the coin-op original. I assume due to memory constraints, but it just doesn't... Well, it doesn't help. It, oh, you fuck. And what is really annoying is the way that the game just... Uh, it has no restart points. I mean, I don't like restart points anyway, but I prefer it to having to do the entire level in one go, which is what this game, uh, that's the situation this game puts you in. So yeah, I'm not keen on that. I mean, surely at some point, game developers must have thought, you know what, putting the player back to the very start of the level is only going to piss people off, so we shouldn't do it. You'd have thought they'd... You'd have thought so anyway, but no. It just keeps on happening. A number of games where you, you know, just try to get right back to the fucking start. waiting for him to throw that so I can get past him. Anyway, uh, graphics are covered. Audio. <laughs> this music is fucking atrocious. Um, however, it is, believe it or not, far from the worst audio I've heard in any version of this game. If you really want to subject yourself to shit audio, uh, check a video of the Atari ST version. I mean, I know Atari ST audio is shit at the best of times, but fuck me. Something went seriously wrong when they did this uh, game on the ST. The audio is just fucking horrendous. I mean, this, this music is absolutely, you know, fucking... Well, it's just utter shite. Uh, but, um, I would still sooner put up with the uh, audio from this game than uh, the ST version. That was fucking close. Uh, and, and to be honest, 
that's about it as far as audio. I mean, there are sound effects in the game, but fuck me, they couldn't be more basic. Oh, you cunt. Oh, okay. Yeah, some great uh, collision detection there. <laughs> And again there, I, what the f- I'm not using any trainers or anything, this is, this is what the collision detection is like. You know, a fucking joke. Oh, what the f- oh, okay. Let's come out here and get some more bullets. I think we are approaching the end of the level. Jump up here, you cunts. Here we go. No, just this last one to get one more shot. There we go. I think that's us done level three. So I got to level four, but uh, again, I've managed to get there with one life. So yeah, I'm not going to get too far here. So I've covered uh, uh, visuals, covered uh, audio. Uh, as far as the gameplay uh, goes, I've played worse. I, I, I can't deny that, you know, it could have been far worse than this. I mean, it, it is not a good conversion. Don't think I'm going to say, yeah, it's actually okay. It's it's not. But, when you think about it, uh, just about every conversion of this game was shite. And when you look at the uh, arcade coin op, You'd think it doesn't look like it would be that difficult to actually do a decent version of this. Um, but yeah, it, it it was always shit. Uh, one more go. But I do think this is a sort of best of a bad bunch uh, scenario. Uh, say, uh, as, as a conversion, it's, yeah, it's, it's shite. It, it looks unfinished to me, uh, but I have a feeling it's not. This, this was, because of the decision not to make it a multi-load game, this is probably as good as they could have hoped for. So, yeah, it's, it's not an unfinished uh, release, it's just that uh, the limitations meant this was what you were going to get, like it or lump it. But yeah, I have played worse, and so I, I can't say yes, it's a fucking pile of shit. I mean, it's, it's not far off it, but... Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I mean, it's, it's mediocre at best, you know, like, like I say, the, the visuals and the audio utterly fucking ruin it, but, um, it does have some gameplay here, so it, that sort of rescues it, just. Would I rec recommend it? Certainly not nowadays. I mean, now if you want to play Rolling Thunder, play it on MAME. Don't waste your time with this. But back in the day, would this have been enough for Rolling Thunder fans? No. <laughs> um, I mean, I felt... Well, I would have felt shortchanged if I'd got this version, but of course I, I had the Amiga version, which was 25 quid. 
Um, so, yeah, I, I, I mean, you wouldn't have felt as bad getting this version back in the day uh, as those who'd bought the Amiga version, or worse, those who had bought the Atari ST version, which I assume was also 25 quid, and, uh, you know, was played at a snail's, play, uh, snail's pace. I mean, the original game is fairly fast. But this this version crawls along just as, just like the Amiga one does. So I, yeah. Yes, it's 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 not good, but yeah, I. I one thing in its favour, you, you can't say it's as shit as the Amiga version, or the, uh, the, the Atari ST version, which is just an absolute fucking abomination. So I made it the fucking level 3 again. One thing I have also noticed is... When, when he jumps in this, because again, in, in, in the coin op version, he sort of fairly bolts along, and when he jumps, he really sort of springs up, like quite athletic. Um, and then in this, he, uh, yeah. <laughs> so the speed is all wrong, it, it needed to be quicker. Level 3 just really doesn't like me. And this music is starting to really fucking great. And I did say the music is starting to great. I did not say the music is great. It fucking well isn't. That means it's put me right back at the fucking start of level. That's something else I hate about this version. You've got to do the level in one life. There's no restart point halfway through it. You've got to do the whole fucking thing. And that is uh, not, uh, that is not good. I fucking hate games that do that. It's not like there's uh, no shortage of I have a feeling level 3 is going to be my limit on this go. Largely because I am starting to think I've had enough of this game. <laughs> I just want this go to end. But I, it's it's against my nature to just stop. It just doesn't feel right. <laughs> so it means I'm fucking persevering. Uh, that was a fuck up, that wasn't intentional, but this is going to be intentional, I, 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 I've had enough. So there you go, Rolling Thunder for uh, Commodore 64. What do I rate it? Um, it's not good. It has so many things going, going against it. 
but there is some pliability there, so I will give it 3 out of 10. I think I might be a bit generous with it there. Um, is it better than the Amiga version? Yeah, I think actually it is better than the Amiga version, only just. I mean, the only thing the Amiga version has going for it is that the sound in the Amiga version is sampled straight from the uh, coin op. But that's not enough to save it. Likewise, okay, yes, this has the playability, but uh, there's so many other things going against it that, uh, well, I say deep play, it has some playability. It's, it's not what I would call an out-and-out out out playable game. It's, it's too slow. But, um, yeah, it could have been worse, but really, it should have been a hell of a lot better. So there we go, Rolling Thunder for Commodore 64, uh, 3 out of 10. Uh, rather generous, I think. Uh, that brings this review to an end, and we'll see you in the next one.